Wendy Williams Experience. Yay! Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. We've got company today. Marcus Houston is coming in. He's got his show Cuts on UPN. I was watching that, I think, last night, right? That show was on last night. I, saw, I was watching it. And um, he's got his CD in stores and, you know, we'll chat it up with Marcus Houston. Plus, we got the celebrities to talk about. Everybody. And and what? And advice hour, of course, is next hour. Okay. So the phone lines are open. I invite you to call. It's 866-GET-WENDY. And remember, it is what it is. It's the Wendy Williams experience. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Tevin Campbell. Ow. All right, Trev Hollywood's on the board right now. He's not as proficient with hitting the buttons. Where, where the hell is Dave? Where is Dave? Karen, can you please go get Dave and tell him to bring his ass in here now? Because I'm telling a story and I need his effectiveness on all my sound effects. I want to hear my ow. How you doing? Ow. How you doing? That's great, <laughs> Trev. But you know, Dave knows it like clockwork. Right, right. Watch how fast Everybody he is. How you doing? No, watch how fast Dave is. Tevin Campbell's going to be performing. How you doing? See? <laughs> this is it right here. Miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. There she go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Glad you guys are here today. Glad to be here with you. And welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. Now, if this is your first time checking out this radio program, I will just say I'm glad that you're here. But just because you like something doesn't mean it's not going to happen again. We play the moo, the moo stays. We play the drill, the drill stays. I laugh at sophomoric stuff, but I'm a grown woman. I pay my bills on time. Art produces the show. He's got queenie ways, doesn't make him a queen. Taryn is the queen of the interns, and that's how we rock. And what? And, it, well, I thought I didn't have to say that because I'm thinking that my delivery is saying it without saying it. And, and it is what it is. I'm sorry. And I'll apologize in advance because feelings could get hurt. Goodness knows you all don't mind coming for me and hurting mine. I've gotten used to it. Don't play the... Uh-uh. Excuse me? Sorry. Let's go to the phone now. Hello? How are you doing, Wendy? Hi, Artie. Yeah, Wendy. Um, I want to tell you something, man. I, last night, I got a PSP for my son. Okay. He's like the ultimate babysitter. He loves it, doesn't he? Yeah, um, he got a Spider-Man disc that came with it, right? Yeah, me too. My son did too. He saw the movie like four times, and he stayed for watching last night. I don't think he sleeps. See, but you know what? It, they're great. They distract the kids and they keep them occupied. I love them. Yeah, and when I was when they, I was like buying drugs last night, I'm waiting on the guy to bring come. I, I couldn't wait. <laughs> I'm still waiting, making the car back and forth. You know, uh -huh. but it worked the time. It worked the time. Uh, yeah. What was that lady yesterday in the, in the five o'clock in the extra hour bonus hour? Was she she, she, was, she was shocked that you were talking about handbags with me. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I should know I'm a winning I listen every day. Thank you. Thank you, Yardy. Well, love your Wendy. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. I didn't want to ask him how his marriage is going. You know, Yardy, he's been married to his high school sweetheart. They're both in their 30s now, and he's fed, fed up to here with it. Hello? Oh, yeah, Wendy. What's going on, girl? Hey, now. Love you. This is Chris from Jersey City, girl. Hey, Chris. Hey, you know, I'm going to be in Jersey City on Saturday. What you doing in Jersey City? Well, you know, remember where the old Rascals was there on Marion Boulevard? Yeah, I remember that. It's now called The Gallery, and I'm hosting a grown and sexy Saturday night party there. Ah, grown and sexy. Mm. That sounds hot. So what's going on? Well, I wanted to thank you for that swoop down on Bobby Brown that you did, Miss Wendy. That was hot. Thank you. A lot of people enjoyed that. That was such an off-the-cuff moment. Oh, my. You could tell because it was so natural, and you was in that moment when he got on the phone. I love you, lady. Yeah, oh, thank you. Oh, my God. And number two, I you had a caller call in once and ask, how do you not get crack lip when you chiefing? Yes. Okay, tell them to roll a filter up in their stuff, and they'll be all right. Like a cigarette filter? Yeah, you know, like in Europe, like they take like a little piece of cardboard, and they roll it up real tight, almost yeah. like a cigarette filter, oh, and they yes. put that in there, and watch. That'll clear it up. Mm, thank you. 
You welcome. I mean, they thank you. Oh, well, hey, yeah. mm -hmm. how you doing? Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, that's how you prevent cracked lip when you're when you're chiefing. Hello. Ooh, how you doing, Wendy? Hi, how are you? I'm good. What's up? This is Raven from Newark. Um, listen, I was out yesterday and I heard you um a caller called in yesterday and um you mentioned uh Michael Jones. Yes. Um I got some information on him because I went to him. Um consultations he charged like 75 bucks okay michael jones everybody is a plastic surgeon who happens to be african-american who happens to be here Very in new good. york city exactly he's located on um 120 east 61st street new york um, mm -hmm. right over there in the um i don't know what district that is but yeah consultations are 25 um excuse me 75 dollars. he does everything from tummy tucks rhinoplasty facelifts um scar revisions you know to botox and collagen so um, I just called the, you know, for you to pass that on to the young lady who was interested. I think she wanted to get with a nose job. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he does that. He's pretty good, though. He, he, you know. What were done. you getting done? I was getting mm, mm, a little man work done. Oh, <laughs> down there? No, up there. Oh, oh, <laughs> pecs. You got pectoral implants. So you no, I did not. When you take off your shirt for the gay pride parade. Yes, you did. Oh, boy. <laughs> Bye, Raven. <laughs> love you, babe. But love you, Bye. too. Hello? Hello? Hi. Oh, my God. This is Wendy. Hey, it's nice to have you here. Oh, my goodness. I'm so happy to talk to you right now. <laughs> well, thank you. I have a problem. I had this boyfriend, I'm not going to say his name, um, he's from Delaware, and he just recently moved to Chicago. Mm -hmm. Now, he's staying with his aunt, and he's not doing anything, he smokes weed, he drinks, and he did, when he went down there, he wants me to come. Now, he went down there, no plans to work or anything like that. Now, he's starting to act funny, now, every time I call him, he's not there. He's busy. Or, he's got a he's got a whole other life going on in Chicago. That's he's, what I think. He's met other women. Yes. And, and he's and he's. I mean, you know, you are. We will be his Baltimore chick, but that's it. Oh, oh my goodness. Is that? Well, I like, just recently broke up with him, and he hasn't called me or anything. So I'm figuring yeah. he's he's probably doing his own thing. Yeah, that's a wrap. Yeah. Can I ask you one more thing? Go ahead. I'm I'm a hairstylist and I work in Philly. Mm -hmm. And. What should, what type of thing should I do to become a celebrity hairstylist? Uh, you know? Well, if you're in Philly, I guess get with Platinum Shears, being that Platinum Shears is like one of the premier salons in Philly. Right. Really? And it's okay. where, whenever I hear celebrity names associated with Philly, I, I hear Platinum Shears. Platinum Shears? You know, I know Jada Pinkett, um, she uh, was the last name I heard mixed up with the spot. But, you know, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, okay. um... I was thinking, because I have two friends that live in L.A., and I always thought that was a good spot for, like, because I know it's a lot of celebrities live in L.A. Well, yeah, if you want to be a celebrity anything, the place to be would be Chicago or, or excuse me, New York or L.A. Yeah, because I have two girlfriends that live in L.A., and they want me to come out there. Yeah, well, that's a start. Maybe you need to do that. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I love you, Wendy. Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right. Today is April 19th. We have six more days before the estate trial of Lamont Bentley begins. And I'll be following that for you all. So what do you think about Tara Reid and Jesse Medcalf, the hot gardener from Desperate Housewives? Well, uh, she's working it. She's working it. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. She's trashy and trampy. And you're brand new, Jesse. And we don't need to look at you in that light. At least not now. Apparently, they were at Us Weekly's Young Hot Hollywood Style Awards, which were in L.A. Um, uh, last week, and um, they were all over each other. And at the same party, Paris Hilton's there, you know. So what you do is you wait for Paris to get a couple of drinks in her, then you ask her about Nicole Richie and the show. And so she was there, and she says that they're inches closer to finding someone special to fill Nicole Richie's position. Um, recently, we were talking about it here on the show, and I was telling you that they were thinking about making Kimberly Stewart, who's Rod Stewart's daughter. Do you remember the red carpet special where the, the, she was on the motorcycle, and the motorcycle took off, and she fell on the ground? Well, so she, Paris was with her that night. You saw them both on the red carpet, so you know they're already friends. Kimberly Stewart is one of these club-hopping, dancing-on-the-table social... She doesn't do anything. So she might be... A 
a wild one to watch. But I do have to say, as far as I'm concerned, no Nicole, game over. Especially because Paris, it's not like it's no Nicole and we all feel like you all are friends. I mean, we know what's going on. Or what seems to be going on, which is Nicole's gotten her life together and and now you're jealous. At least that's how I interpret it in my crazy head. This is what Paris says, though. It's my show. I've had three seasons and I just want to freshen it up, make it newer and funnier. Jab, jab. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And she and Nicole and she and um, Kimberly Stewart have known each other since they were uh, in their mom's tummies. Is what she goes on to, you know, poke funny at. Okay, well, whatever. I won't be watching. Are you guys gonna watch? Are you gonna watch the next season? Well. Somebody will be watching. Somebody always watches those shows. How do they get such good numbers? You know what comes on tonight? LeBron Londa Watch Show. Um, the Lie Detector on PAX. It's my joint. And then Starlet with Vivica. Yeah. It's Tuesday. Um, all right. So where are we going? You know what? During Advice Hour, I have an interesting issue via a fax from a man who happens to now live with his partner and... Um, I've got an opinion on it, Alex, for what it's worth, but I'm going to save this during advice hour. Also, five secrets to successful couples. Oh, you. That's what I brought to uh, the table today. Five secrets to successful couples, according to the love and personals part of Netscape. So I'll share it. Whatever's going on in your life, we do advice hour next hour. In the meantime, the phone lines are open again. Give me a call. Wendy, man. I've been with this guy for like five years, and I know you say don't cheat. I know, but I can't help it. I want to. Do you have intention on getting married? We're married. Oh, my God. The Wendy Williams Experience. Hey, everybody. So, okay, it's already starting on Wisteria Lane. Well... It was last week everybody was reporting that Alfre Woodard uh, would be a part of the cast. And Alfre Woodard in Hollywood has a reputation for being the consummate professional. Well, she's held up the season finale. Now, before I tell you this, I just want you to know that the production assistants and and the creator, people have unanimously given her great reviews. She's been punctual and she's prepared despite working on um, Housewives and then she's working on a movie at the same time with um, Antonio Banderas. But here's where the problem lies. Now, Mark Cherry happens to be the creator of um, Desperate Housewives. (coughs) And he has structured the filming schedule for the season finale to accommodate Alfre Woodard's work on the Antonio Banderas movie. And that does not sit well with Terry Hatcher. An anonymous source is saying that Terry's used to working a certain amount of hours and then going home. But this week, it's been rough because Mark Cherry, the creator, is making her shoot a lot of scenes in the day when normally it's spread over three days. And Terry's mad. She hasn't stepped to Alfre Woodard. Nor will she. But um, also they say that Felicity Huffman's ego is a little bruised because she lost out twice to Alfre Woodard for the Emmys. And so she's not even thrilled that Alfre Woodard is there. Too bad. Now deal with that. Just keep delivering us the shows. Oh, magazine... um. O Magazine did um, Who Has the Best Butts. And so for the men, it's Brad Pitt, number one, 34.4 votes. 34.4% of the votes. I don't even look at Brad Pitt's behind. What does that all look like? I'm just thinking the usual white guy, you know, a little saggy in the seat, nothing really to look at. Who's looking? 
Well, Dwayne The Rock comes in with 10% of the votes. And Vin Diesel got third place. I'm not looking at any of their butts. Then they did the women's category in O Magazine. Jennifer Lopez is number one. Beyonce is number two. And Angelina Jolie is number three. That was the ghost of Jennifer Aniston turning off the equipment. <laughs> Anybody check on um, DMX? I don't have any new developments in the story. Just the same as yesterday. Nobody cares. Nobody cares? No. <laughs> well, just to catch you up to date, it's the same as it was yesterday where he was arrested uh, following an accident, you know, in the Bronx. There were three people injured, including two cops and a woman. And everybody but him was taken to the hospital. Thus far, I haven't even heard of him going to the hospital. This all happened on Friday evening on the Major Deacon Expressway. His car struck a vehicle driven by an unidentified woman. And then her car hit an unmarked police car. I guess the impact of her car was you know, enough to send her into somebody else. Well... There's nothing more than that I have on the case. I was just finding out if maybe you had something and you could let me know. I have nothing, nothing new. Is the toxicology report back? <laughs> Don't know that there was one ordered, but it is DMX, so, you know. <laughs> you know what I never talked with you guys about? The follow-up to the Joan Kennedy story. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Ted Kennedy's wife, who was, well, you know what? Don Gentile, um, one of my WAG colleagues, did um, an, an article, and it basically spells it out because nobody has even pointed to that she had liquor on her breath when she fell. We all just kind of assume because she's had such an awful battle with alcohol. Well, Don starts off his article by saying, Alone and helpless after falling on a Boston street, a gray-haired woman cut a sad figure as she struggled to rise to her feet but found herself unable. A neighbor rushed to her aid, only then to realize that the woman was Joan Kennedy, former wife of Senator Edward Kennedy, who has long battled alcoholism. Sadly, drinking was once again responsible for the latest setback in her life says a close friend. When she was brought to the hospital, her blood alcohol level was high, showing that she's hitting the bottle again. Keep the music going. Joan, 68, divorced Teddy back in 1982. And she's been arrested four times for drunk driving and treated several times for alcohol abuse. <coughs> so I guess this time she said, well, let me just leave the steering wheel and just walk to where I have to go. And she, alas, she wasn't even able to manage that. She fell out on the sidewalk. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Artist Connie Bacon, 35, discovered Jones sprawled out on the sidewalk just one block away from her condo in the Back Bay section of Boston. She called 911 and held an umbrella over Joan. Joan was taken to the hospital where she was diagnosed with a concussion and a fractured shoulder. Her son, Patrick Kennedy, the Rhode Island rep, uh, rushed to her side. And ever since then, it's been 24-7, you know, making sure somebody's there. His mother's troubles are definitely a factor in Patrick's decision not to seek a Senate seat. He feels he needs to be there for her. Joan feels her children are doing the right thing, according to her friend of 25 years, Anne Gund. Anne, who's talking to the National Enquirer, here's her quote. I've seen her drunk like that one or two times. She gets quite sweet. She's not a nasty drunk. And we always make sure someone gets her home. She doesn't go out to bars. She drinks alone. Mm-mm-mm. Well, that's about it. I mean, the case is closed on that this particular story simply because no one ever said that alcohol played a factor. I mean, for all we know, it's 68. All kind of reasons that, for you to fall out in the street, in the rain, sprawled out on the sidewalk. You know. Alas, it's not weak joints. 
It's the bottle. Okay, everybody, keep it here, my friends. Advice Hour is coming up next. Get your faxes and phone calls in. It's windy, man. I have a girl, right, for 10 years. Like, half of it. I've been in jail, like, five or years. I come home recently, right? Mm-hmm. And I come to find out now she's dealing with women. I don't have no problem with that, you know what I mean? As long as you can be in on it. Yeah, yeah. The Wendy Williams Experience. Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. Advice out. I'm having a problem with my fiancé and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, holy drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Fax Wendy at 866-WENDY-FAX. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm Mm-hmm. You're in a privileged position to learn a thing or two. Keep your mouth shut and your eyes open. Wendy Williams. Yeah, this is Ghostface. What up, what up? Holla at your boys, Jay-Z. Hey, yo, this is Buster Rob. The Wendy Williams Experience. Yo, did you catch this flashback? We had, um, we had a business meeting this morning, and so... <laughs> I mean, I know what I was there for because my name is on the show and stuff, but I I was busy drawing pictures of feet and passing them to art. I'm busy getting turned on. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> that last picture was a little too good. The picture of the lady in the stiletto foot? Yes, yes. Did you see the Fred Flintstone foot what, that I drew with the, I, I with the five up. pebbles? Got him. This is right here. Miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> Hey, everybody. It's Advice Hour here on the Wendy Williams Experience. Shout out to everybody busy working. You know what I have this hour? I have some stats on working women and how we de-stress. And the stats are really interesting, so I brought them to share with you guys. Is that a t-shirt from Target Art? I recognize when I say... Did you, did you, yeah, I was just there yesterday. You know, you, you know what happens, you know, cause, um, I have a four year old and so, you know, with the kids growing and stuff like that, I have no problem, but you have to get there before the actual summer season kicks off in order to get the best pick of the stuff. Like targets has just gotten their summer stuff in summer is right around the corner. We've had a few nice days, nothing to wear shorts or anything like that, but you know, he's a, like a weird size. But what I like about Target is that, like, all right, this is kind of embarrassing to say because he's 14, but he wears a size 16 Husky in the the denim shorts. And the Husky, inside, there's a tab that you pull to loosen the waist or make the waist. That's the difference between the Husky and the non-Husky. It's the tab that you pull to adjust the waist, which I absolutely love. So I got him a bunch of those. And then, um, you know, like, the fellas like to wear their white T-shirts, well, so do the little boys. And quite frankly, as a mom, I love to just put on a white T-shirt because it's no matching. It's no matching. So, um, but you have to get there early. So he wears the size extra large in the white T-shirts. And so I had, shout out to um, everybody who works at the Targets in Clifton, New Jersey. That's my favorite one. Thank you so much. So they went to the back and they got me. They didn't have any extra larges out. They got me. And they said, how many do you want? I said, give me 15. Because 15 will take me through the summer, you know. Because if he gets one dirty and and it, the stain doesn't come out, then you use that for pajamas. I don't play. You know, we recycle. Um, and I got his collection of socks. Shaquille O'Neal has his line of sneakers there. You know, his dad will buy him other. But mom, you know, I'm Target. And I love the, the Shaq shoes, as, as uh, my son calls them. You know, get some Shaqs. And then the Massimo stuff. And I'm judging through the women, women's stuff and the Isaac Mizrahi and everything. And I'm just picking up stuff before I know it. I have like like 90% of everything that I have is, is clothing. <laughs> you know, and then I got my Tide and, you know, the usual stuff. My Jergens. Do you use the Jergens? I talked to you about that. I'm telling you, the Jergens lotion minimizer, the hair minimizer, it works. And the Jergens shimmer lotion, you find all that stuff, you know, at, at the Target. Tylenol. Got a prescription filled. I love that. And they open early, which I love. It's a full-service store. A full-service store. I love it. Everything from clothing to the Tide to paper cups. We eat off paper at our house a lot of times. Because who, who's going to empty the... Who feels like being bothered? 
you know? Some people will say it's very tacky to use plastic products in your house, you know? But me, I guess I'm the queen of tacky then, because I, I was there getting my paper cups. I picked up a copy of Faith's CD also. Which, you know, I got as a gift, actually. A Mother's Day gift for somebody. And I just didn't feel like waiting for a copy to come into the radio station. I just, Let me just pick this up, you know. And then I'm out. You're in, you're out. It's quick. I love Target. Target. Uh-oh. Okay, so let's hit the telephones first. Then I wanted to give these stats on working women and how we de-stress. And um, somewhere in here, you'll probably fit into one of these categories. Hello? Hello, Wendy. This is Marianne. Hi, Marianne. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm basically calling about uh, a lady that called you yesterday. Mm -hmm. She called you. She said she'd met a policeman online. And um, she was asking you about, she was saying that she hadn't been able to meet him. But they had phone sex and they've only known each other for a week. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you told her, you know, all these things about uh, not letting him find out her license number and everything because he has ability to check and everything. Mm -hmm. But I think you missed the mark because it seemed like she'd already been stalking him out. Because, uh, like she said, she had this person that worked where he worked and she knew, you know, how tall he was. I mean, and basically what he looked like. I mean, my whole thing about her is that she seems like uh, she's desperately single. Desperate, and when yeah. I say, when I say desperately single, they're, they're, it's one thing to be single and to want the company of a gentleman or if you're gay, another woman. It's another right. thing to be desperately single, having phones. I mean, she, she was just, the only thing I forgot to ask her is how old was she with all that immaturity? Right. Yeah. Right. So, it's advice hour now, though. Do you have a question? Well, I have been wanting to talk to you ever since about the time when you got rid of your dog. Oh, and man. I never pictured you as a dog person. And I'm not. Art now has Wilson. I'm a uh, Wilson now. Well, mm-hmm. I was going to call you with advice about mine. But since you gave yours away, I know what you would tell me to do with mine. Get rid of yours. Yeah, I know that's what you would tell me after oh. I found out that you had given yours away. All right, well, swing it to me. Uh, let, uh, ask the question. Um... Well, um, I basically, when I called you today, I had wanted to talk to you about the lady from yesterday. Oh, That's no. what I wanted to talk to you about. And uh, when she was, um, you know, it just seemed that, like you said, that she was so desperately single. Yeah. And um, it didn't seem like it would be a good advice for anybody like her to meet anybody online. Yeah. Okay, listen, I have to run. Okay, Wendy. Um, and you take care. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, I love how she had a perfectly snobby delivery. I love that. I thought she was going to ask me a dog question. I was going to push it off to you, Art, since you seem to have tamed the shrew named Wilson. Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi, Wendy. I have a question for you. Okay. Okay, I'm 25 years old. I have a two-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. Her father, he's older than me. He's 32. Mm -hmm. Um, We've been together for three and a half years. You know, during a relationship, it was fighting arguments. He cheated on me. I never cheated on him. Um, I gave him another chance, but since then, you know, the relationship has been rocky. So I'm seeing someone else. He's my ex. I've been with him, you know, before for a year and a half, and he's willing to step up to the plate to be there for my daughter and me. I mean, he's so nice to me. Is he the father of your daughter? No. He's my ex-boyfriend that I've been with for a year and a half, a couple of years ago. Why go back? Why not just move on altogether? I mean, that's what I'm calling to find out because my friends are telling me I need to just leave both of them alone and start start fresh. But my ex-boyfriend, he didn't do anything <coughs> wrong to me. We just separated. How old is he? He's 25 as well. Put that where? Back there. And my daughter's father, he's seeing someone and he's telling me he's not going to stop seeing her until he knows I'm, you know, serious about being back with him. But it's like... I'm thinking he's just trying to have the both of us. He's trying to have his cake and eat it, too. So how old is your daughter? She's two. Yeah. You've been involved in relationships for all of your 20s. Um, you- Pretty much. I ran wild in my late teens, so I'm to the point now where I do want to settle down because I lived... But do you realize that a big, the biggest part of settling down is not the partner right. that you settle down with, right. but all that you bring to the table as a woman? Right. And you've had no time to get your grown woman on because you were busy running wild when you were younger. Right. And now involved with these men. Right. And now you have your daughter. Right. I mean, I have and, a good job, um, my own apartment. I'm very independent. Nice, nice. You know, and I just, you know, I do 
still love her for but I, I just think he's trying to get over on me. I, you know what? I don't like going back to exes like that. Right. I mean, I, I even prefer... <laughs> Maybe one day you and the father will get together since you do have something in common that's the child. But right. as far as this ex who was your your ex boyfriend and and you know, leave him. Just your... leave both of them alone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, no, I, I like do you and and then while you're doing you, meet a new pool of men. Right, exactly. See, I feel the same, but like I I, I love you so much and I trust your opinion. And I just needed a little confirmation from you. Yeah, <laughs> because do everyone you. is basically telling me the same thing. Mm. So All right. I feel better hearing it from you. <laughs> I, I wish you well. Thank you, Wendy. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hi. H hello. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hello. And it's Advice Hour. Um, is this for the Wendy Williams show? Yes, it is. Turn your radio down, okay? Okay. So it's Wendy. What's going on? I'm calling for some advice mm -hmm. on my man, who, by the way, I should let you know, I don't want to give a name, but he pretty much made like seven kids in the about to be six years we've been together. Okay, so so who's dumb, you or him? I'm trying to figure out how the heck I'm supposed to get over this man. Well, girl, if you don't see the writing on the wall, then I can't help you with it. I'm I'm sorry. Um, you have a nice day. Thank you. Bye bye. I mean, really. Okay, so 22 percent of women have sex to unwind from a tough day at the office. Yeah, baby. 67 percent of us cuddle up to a remote. 37% of women plug into their office or their workplace after hours. In other words, you know, you go online, you check your emails from work, and, you know, even when you get home from work, you're still working. That's 37% of us. 56% of women say that work stresses um, are hurting their relationship. 56%. 22% of women say that they're too busy on the job to take a lunch hour. 37% mm. of women bring work home from the office. Just thought you should know what's going on with other women in the workplace. Oh, gosh. And 50% and of the women are on their knees with their boss. No, it doesn't say that. Okay. Dear Wendy, I need your advice. <clears throat> Last Friday, I moved... Oh, I have one minute. Darn, I can't start it. Damn, I can't start it. You know that. what? You know, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, you don't. You actually have three minutes. Okay. Last Friday, I moved in with my partner of five years to a beautiful one-bedroom apartment. Partner is buzzword for gay. This is from a man, and he happens to be gay. Since moving in, my seven-year-old niece has come over and has been very inquisitive. She saw a pair of jeans at the house. She knew that they weren't mine. She then asked if Jay, that's, that's the lover, was living with me and even brought over three nice-looking rocks, one for Jay, one for my dog, and one for me. I denied it and told her that she can spend the night on certain days, in other words, when he goes to see his son. That's what in parentheses says. However, we went away this past weekend, me, my sister, and my niece, and and while we were away, she kept talking about Jay. Did I miss him? How did I become friends with him? So on and so forth. Wendy, I know it's only a matter of time before she really starts putting things together. I know she's too young to explain all this to, but kids are very smart, and they know what's really going on. What should I do? How should I prepare myself for future questions? Should I bring this up to my sister and talk to her about it? Where should we go from here? Hope this all makes sense. It's from Alex. Alex, I put this all on your sister because one slip of the tongue from you, no pun intended, and you could be taking her up a road that, that um, perhaps your sister doesn't want her to become so familiar with at, at this particular age. She's only seven. And it Alex, I love you in the whole bit, but as far as spending the night at your house, that wouldn't be happening if you... I'd be like, you know what? 
Alex, if you want to spend some time with your niece, come over, you know, to our house and you can spend the night and so on and so forth. And how did a seven-year-old know that those weren't your jeans? How did she know that? I mean, jeans are jeans. How did she know? I would avoid it altogether and I would have a talk with her mother, your sister, and and then I would respect her mother, your sister's wishes in how it's handled. You know? Oh, too much information for these kids. Too much. Too much. Oh, Uncle Alex and his lover Jay and, and the jeans and... Mm. Advice Hour continues next. Keep it here. It's windy, man. I got slayed so well. Made me do things I don't even do to my husband. Oh, my God! The Wendy Williams Experience. Yo, did you catch this flashback? I always tell you guys, I am crafty. I you, I was a wicked with the bedazzler back in the day when I had time. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. I'm a wicked with the hammer, the screwdriver. I can make... Listen, when I was living in D.C., I used to live on Sherman Avenue. I made all the furniture in my apartment. I made a couch. I lied to you. I wow. swear to goodness. Wow. I lied to you not. I'd be back and forth, you know, like getting the lumber and stuff like that, bringing it into the apartment, making it. I was only making $9,000 a year. I wanted a place that was special. I don't do thrift. Yeah. Goodness knows how many people farted on that couch. You know, how much funky spunk has splashed off on that crap. You got this is it right here. <laughs> Miss a day, miss a whole lot. It's windy, man. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can probably tell by watching season three of Making of the Band that um, Puffy doesn't seem to be as into it as he was for the first season, or dare I say the second season, but really that first season. And they're saying that, here's the thing, Puffy's thing is he won't be forced to find his band just because it's a television show. It's reality TV. So if he doesn't see it, he doesn't see it. In other words, if he doesn't see a winner, there won't be one. And the people at MTV are not thrilled about this. So there is a little war, they're saying, going on between MTV and Puffy regarding this. But, you know, you should have pulled the plug on making of the band after the second season. And if you wanted to give him a development deal to continue doing other projects, then perhaps, sure, you know. <clears throat> no doubt he has he probably has some great ideas up there. But this making the band thing, I don't know, it's just tired. Those reality shows, they don't they don't go on like, on like that. It's like Nicole Richie trying to, you know, replace... I mean, you know, Paris trying to replace Nicole and go on with a third season of Surreal Life. Or would this be the fourth season next year? Next year would be the fourth season? I don't know. I've, I'm lost. And real quick before we get back into advice. So you know that lawsuit that was launched against Truth Hurts back in 2002, the Indian film company and music company suing her because of her song Addictive? Well, apparently... There have been so, so much back and forth relating to that song that her side and the Indian company's side, they're all confused as to what's going Nobody cares. Well, do you care that Mackay Pfeiffer has stepped up to show support to Truth Hurts? <coughs> I figured so, so that's why I, let me go on. Actor Mackay Pfeiffer and apparently somebody named Paraminder Negra, they work uh, on ER together. And um, Mackay says, look, I'm here. Apparently, he's been showing his support. I don't know whether it's via court or via letters or what, but showing his support for um, Truth Hurts. We are friends. It's all good. Yada, yada, yada. He first met Truth through the legendary Rakim. I know. I can't figure out the correlation either, but it's not our business to figure out, I guess. Until we find out they've been sleeping together, then we will be on it like a condom, won't we? Um, okay. Five secrets to successful couples. Well, this is what I got from love and the personals. Number one, maintain your own identity. So I go along with that. So that's where I brought it to you. You got to maintain your own identity. Relationships are about two individual people with their own individual strength, mm. and strengths, and then you come together and then you represent a yeah. united front of strength and and solidarity yeah. within your individuality. 
Um, the number two thing that they say is to fight, but fight fairly. Yes, fights are good, but fight fairly. Number three, sweat the small stuff. See, I say don't sweat the small stuff, but they say sweat it. They say it's tempting once you're settled and secure in your union to forget about little courtesies. Remember when you were still trying to impress each other with niceties, opening the door, sending love notes, and surprising them with work, uh, lunch at work and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, you sweat things like that. When my small stuff is like socks in the middle of the floor. You know, just you know, pick them up, pick them up and put them in the hamper and keep going. Number four, they say, um, keep the bed sheets burning. Ooh. Requires no explanation. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and number yeah. five, keep working at it. Yeah, it's true what they say. Relationships are constant work. Dear Wendy, do you have a recommendation for a bronzer that gives me the sun-kissed glow? I've tried MAC bronzer, and it seems as though I'm really orange afterwards. What cream do you suggest for fa uh, surgical scars? Okay, two questions in one. Um... I like Mederma for surgical scars. Um, I find that that works really well. At one point, it was only prescription, but now you can actually just, like, go into Target or something and just pick it up, Mederma. It's, it's like, 30 bucks a tube, but a little dab will do you, and you just use it consistently. And as far as bronzer, I mean, I use MAC bronzer, but I find that I also need to zhuzh it up a bit. So I use um, the CVS lotion-y one. Banana Boat. No, Banana Boat, they don't make anymore. I haven't seen it at CVS in ages. This Banana Boat self-tanner, that's what I used to use. This is the first season that I'm not using it. So I, instead of going to Neutrogena, I decide, let me just buy the store brand and see what happens. CVS in the deep dark, the, the yellow tube, it, uh, that works. That works like a charm. And then a little MAC bronzer, sure. Dear Wendy, I want your advice. I'm a 27-year-old woman with uh, two kids and a husband. I have a full-time job, and I'm in school. Now, all my life, Wendy, I wanted to be a dancer. I don't know if I will have time to take lessons now, but I dance all the time at home when I'm cleaning. But when I see the videos and I see the girls dancing, I say to myself, that could be me. Wendy, should I pursue my dream or just let it go? Let it go? Put that where? Back there. Way back there. You just keep dancing with the Windex because you've already made your bed. I mean, please, you got to start out at like, what, 15, even to, to to drop it like it's hot dancing. You know, them girls are doing that whether when they're eight, Tay-Tay they and them. It's never them. too late, though. When you're 27 with a husband and two kids, <laughs> school and a full-time job. Now, I'm not a dream killer. Far be it from me to, you know, kill somebody's dreams and say, don't take a second career. But in this particular case... It's over. That's all she wrote. No dancing. <laughs> Dear Wendy, I'm a 26-year-old female in New Jersey, and I have one... Uh, excuse me, I have a 7-year-old son, and I moved back with my mom. My date of birth is in October of, of uh, 1978. So my question to you is... I've been dating this older gentleman in his 40s for about a month and a half, and we've already done the deed. Since then, he hasn't called me. I know he does overtime due to his position that he holds, but damn, um, just a call, yada, yada, yada. My question to you is, I have called three times and left messages. I will not call anymore. What do you think is going through this man's mind? I think he got what he wanted, and now he's on to the next stop. You know, there's no predicting these things. I don't know how long you waited from the time that you met him to the time that you had sex with him, but he got what he wanted. Now he's moved on. Don't call him anymore. And when he calls you, you don't want to even be available. And you, you know what? Be bigger than him and don't even bring up the sex or your nasty attitude. You know, just tell him, you know what? You didn't. You know what? As a matter of fact, diss his ass. <laughs> tell him you weren't sexually compatible. He didn't put it down the way you like, and that's that. You don't have time for do-overs. Diss him back. And I wish you well. Everybody, Marcus Houston is coming up. Keep it here. Wendy, man. She says, I know that Tyrone doesn't care about me. She says, he looks at me like I'm just a piece of... And I look at him like he's just some... The Wendy Williams Experience.